Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. I need to get a little drink of water here. De Corsi, a protege of British SIS Chief Sir Stuart Menzies, was born November 6th in 1909. He was the son of the claimant to the title of the 8th Duke de Grants Menil, which is a dubious title of Anglo-Norman origin, nonetheless given credence as an honorary by de Brett's Peerage. De Corsi has had numerous high-level associations, or associates, I should say, within the Club of the Isles, and he is one of the leading apologists for the House of Windsor's involvement in the drive to impose Adolf Hitler upon a prostate Germany for a drive to the east against Russia. Among his Club of the Isles friends who were involved in the project were His Royal Highness Duke George Duke of Kent who was also a leader of the United Grand Lodge of England, and King Edward VIII, who was forced to abdicate because of his pro-Nazi views, when by 1936 a faction of the Club of the Isles had come to see Hitler as a dangerous Frankenstein monster. Of course, he remained faithful to the Duke of Windsor, even after the Duke was known to have entered into negotiations with Hitler to be restored to the throne of England by the Wehrmacht. De Corsi was very close to the evangelical Lord Holm of the Herschel, who was with Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain at Munich. However, the egotist Kenneth Hugh de Corsi made the mistake of placing some of his records on file at the Hoover Institution's archives, including a document he claims he wrote in Wormwood Scrubs Prison while serving a sentence there for financial fraud. This document concerns his own role in the escape of convicted Soviet spy and suspected British triple agent George Blake in October 1966. Some United States intelligence sources believe that Blake did more damage to United States interests than British triple agent H.A.R. Kim Philby, whom you've all heard of. In his latest prophecy appearing in the pages of Corsi's Intelligence Digest and Special Office, he is once again claiming that there will be a renewed Middle East war by 1998, that's this year, that will escalate into World War III. And ladies and gentlemen, if you could see all of the information that I gather here from all of my people worldwide, I would not, I would not reject that as an offhand ridiculous statement. It's very possible, and it could actually occur. According to de Corsi, Russia is assisting Iran and Syria to prepare for such a war through the transfer of nuclear technology. In order to save Israel, the British will have to rely upon the United States arsenal to obliterate the Russian-Syrian-Iranian alliance. Should President Bill Clinton, the de Corsi states, hates Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, balk at this escalation, then the British will destroy Clinton by playing their trump card. Sixty million evangelicals in the United States. The situation is such that Netanyahu may himself launch a preemptive nuclear strike. Otherwise, de Corsi said that China was doing everything it could to maneuver Russia into an alliance with Iran for the forthcoming Middle East War. The reason is that Russia is extremely weak militarily, it has only a strategic missile capability left after having decimated its other military units, and that's what they want the world to believe. It is not true, ladies and gentlemen. If there is a new Middle East war, then he foresees China might move to take eastern Russia, which he claims has been a long-term goal. It would be impossible, given China's vast population and territorial depth, for it to be conquered by Russia or by anybody else for that matter. De Corsi's latest prophecy is a reliable expression of the viewpoint of a powerful faction within the Club of the Isles. As a leader 
of BIWF in London pointed out, King George VI had had his genealogical chart traced back to King David, and he educated his daughters in British Israelism, including his heir, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Now, who are you going to believe, folks? <laughs> For I tell you that everyone who believes in this scam of British Israelism, or Christian identity, is, in effect, and in reality, calling Jesus Christ a liar. If you don't believe that, listen to their version of the world's history, and then go read the words in red in your Bible. Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me. He didn't say, suffer the little white children to come unto me. He did not say, suffer the little Anglo-Saxon Aryan children to come unto me. He did not say, suffer the little black children to come unto me, or the little red children, or the little yellow children. He said, suffer the little children to come unto me. He said, whosoever believeth in me shall have everlasting life. He said a lot of other things, ladies and gentlemen. All that say the same thing. That he was, if you're a Christian, and you must believe this if you're a Christian, he was the salvation of all humanity. He was the end of all pain and suffering. He was the standard around which all people, rich and poor, sick, healthy, lame, black, White, yellow, red, purple, green, I don't care. To end all of the wars and bring about God's kingdom on this earth. Anybody who tells you anything different from that is calling Jesus Christ a liar. If you don't believe me, you read his own words in red in the Holy Bible. If you don't believe in Christianity, or even in any other religion, the answer to the problems of the world is not the Mormon Church. It is not the Southern Baptist Church. It is not the Seventh-day Adventists. It is not the Presbyterians. It is not British Israelism. It is not atheism. It is simply to follow the teachings and the admonishments of the greatest men who have ever lived upon the face of this earth, one of which was Jesus Christ, who told us the truth, and we haven't listened yet. And even though we have his words at our disposal, within arm's reach in almost every home or in every library throughout the world, people Still, go and listen to these lies and believe them. Go back and read that Jesus Christ contradicted every single thing that these people are teaching you, and you still don't understand it. Can't get it through your head. He said, Wheresoever you shall gather in my name, there shall I be also. He did not say, wheresoever you who are Anglo-Saxon Aryan gather in my name, there I will be also. Or there shall I be also. He didn't say that. He didn't put black in there. He didn't put yellow in there. He didn't put red in there. All of these people are using you. They are lying to you. Once again, they are deceiving you and manipulating you into hating each other and accomplishing the exact opposite of what Jesus Christ set out to accomplish. And so if you call yourself a Christian, you must reject these things, but you must not believe me just because I say it. Good night, ladies and gentlemen, and God bless each and every single one of you.